All right, good afternoon. Uh, hopefully everybody's got it in lunch and you're about to fall asleep. Is that good? Everybody good? No. Um, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Sean O'Dell. I'm a senior staff architect, uh, and I'll preface that a cloud architect at VMware, and I'll even preface that further. I am not talking about on-premises, as most people think of VMware. Um, actually part of the uh, VMware Cloud Services team focused on SaaS, uh, focused on uh, really multi-cloud, my, my, my primary focus is multi-cloud operations, uh, and then I dabble in a little bit of uh, Kubernetes with my uh, counterpart in the cloud native space. And uh, looking forward to the conversation today, and uh, I'll introduce, or well, he can introduce himself. I'm Jeff Fry, I'm a business engineer, business development engineer with CloudBees. And so we've been working with the VKE team over the last few months, um, getting CloudBees Core, our enterprise Jenkins product, working on their VKE platform. It's a, it's a great partnership. It's a great solution, and so we're pretty proud to be discussing this and showing this to you. So I'll hand it over to Absolutely. John. Absolutely. Uh, thanks, Jeff. And uh, I'll, 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 uh, I gave a video yesterday for the CloudBees team, uh, really just talking about the partnership and working with, uh, with them really around this space. Um, before I jump into Kubernetes or BKE, uh, as, we, as we call it, I want to kind of set the stage a little bit. Um, who is a VMware customer? Your organization is a customer. How many of you actually use the, what I would refer to as the traditional VMware day in and day out, like you actually get into it? Nobody? I didn't think so, because you just run stuff on top of it. Um, and and you know, most, most folks, honestly, it still have its today. I've been on this team for about 18 months, and every time I have a conversation, I always preface this by stating, I work for VMware, I do not touch vSphere, I am not a VMware homer by any stretch of the imagination. Most of my time is spent in native public clouds, uh, Amazon and Google, uh, and then obviously, uh, you know, in, in, in the DevOps space, you know, day in and day out. Um, and I always get a kind of a chuckle because they're like, oh, you're not doing anything on-prem. Uh, what I want to talk about today is VMware Kubernetes Engine. Uh, and then we're going to, obviously, we'll get into the uh, demo and everything here in just a bit. Uh, but VMware Kubernetes Engine is a, uh, it is a software as a service or Kubernetes as a service offering uh, that we announced a few months ago. Um, and it runs in the public cloud. Um, at launch, we run in Amazon Web Services. Uh, we actually manage all of the, uh, the backend stuff for you. I think you'll see as we get into this today. Um, but our, really our goal was to, to really provide customers the ability to run Kubernetes in a simple and seamless fashion um, and honestly, as quickly as possible. Uh, you'll see here in just a minute, I'll do a couple of command lines to actually create a cluster. And you'll see rather quickly, I'm up and running, created, and inside kubectl or kubectl. Um, anybody want to throw kube control in there too? Um, rather quickly. Um, and really, that's the goal. You might say, okay, but it's only Amazon. Yeah, we're actually going to provide support for Azure, and then eventually Google and a potentially VMware on-prem or Ali Cloud or whatever you know, service provider decides to jump up tomorrow. But really our goal is to, is to help customers, and I think I, I had this conversation with a, uh, with a retail company a couple weeks ago, and he basically said, I have an entire team that's dedicated to manage, support Kubernetes on, on, on Google, and I have the same thing for Amazon. And he goes, I don't want to be in the infrastructure business owning and managing and supporting and, and doing all of that. And so they're actually really interested in, uh, in VKE. Um, at the end of the day, it's a certified Kubernetes uh, conformant. We're not doing anything crazy or different. Um, and the key is when you're in that specific public cloud, in this case AWS today, we do support full integration with the services. Um, VMware Cloud Services, like I said, is a team I'm associated with. We do have a a plethora of services that, we, uh, that we've announced over the past uh, year. Um, is anybody a Cloud Health customer? Anybody a Cloud Health customer? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, we made the announcement uh, at VMworld a few weeks ago that we have an intent to acquire Cloud Health. I own that. Um, and you might say, what does that have anything to do with DevOps? Really, at the end of the day, we want not only cost visibility and data, as well as how about security and governance information actually inside of the pipeline. So as you're provisioning an application, um, does it meet certain governance standards, whether it's CIS benchmarks or AWS best practices and so on. Um, but really that's from within the pipeline. Um, and so you see a lot of things from us uh, moving forward in this space. Um, this is always a fun one. I always get this question, so I'll you know, leave this slide up. Uh, from a VMware perspective, how are we utilizing container consumption? Um, what are we doing in the open source space, if you could say it that way? 
Um, but really at VMware, we, we've actually done this for many years now. Um, and we've got a couple of things that we've done. So if you're an on-premises customer and you want to know how to leverage a managed Kubernetes for VMware or for VMware on-prem, we do have our VMware integrated containers, uh, which is a part of eSphere. And then we also have an announce our, uh, we have a partnership with Pivotal, and we launched the uh, Pivotal Container Service uh, about a year ago now. Um, and it is managed on-premises Kubernetes, uh, a little bit of VMware, a little bit of P uh, Pivotal using the Bosch space. Um, and then you can also provision outbound from there. Um, but really our focus today is VMware Kubernetes engine, uh, really from a full, you know, full managed SaaS service perspective. And uh, let's, uh, let's take a look at that. So uh, one of the things I think is extremely important when we get into this conversation is the ability to leverage Kubernetes and honestly the existing ecosystem. Um, what you're actually going to see from the demo from, from Jeff and I is in this case we actually utilize CloudBees core uh, Helm, uh, obviously you know uh, Kubernetes, our stuff. Um, really the goal is to expand and, and really be beyond or not, not simply be in our own space but actually utilize open source technologies and wonderful vendors in the space um, who are helping in the area of DevOps, in the area of CI, CD, and obviously you know, we could take that a little bit further. Um, and so we continue to leverage that, um, and we're going to continue to expand on those partnerships. You'll see some really good things from us uh, in, in the upcoming, uh, in, the, in the coming months of how we're doing that, uh, and, and, and really just kind of the, the additional space there. Um, and this goes far beyond Kubernetes, by the way. This goes into microservices um, and, uh, and, and some of the things that we're doing there. One of the key benefits of VMware Kubernetes Engine, probably the question you're asking yourself is why is this any different than a VKE, a GKE, an AKS, an EKS, a Fargate, you know, whatever it may be. Um, and there's a lot of similarities. I think one of the key differentiators for us is what we call a smart cluster. And yes, it is trademarked, right? Because we think we've, we've, we've got some, uh, some intellectual property that is really beneficial. And what we've done is we actually automate the entire process, the entire infrastructure of a Kubernetes deployment. What I mean by that is that's, that's all the way down to the worker nodes. We're gonna spin up, spin down, spin out, spin up, you know, however you wanna term it, but you as the organization are not having to be the ones who manage it. Right, I'm not gonna go pick on, on uh, ECS or some of the others in the space, but at the end of the day, do you really wanna manage Kubernetes? Probably not. Um, it is another piece of infrastructure. It should work like it, uh, like it, you know, like you want it to be. So what we've done with the smart clusters um, is we're really optimizing um, resource utilization. That does help with cost, right? Um, we want we want to be as cheap as you know as, as possible. Um, and then the other key is built-in high availability. And uh, I normally don't get into the GUI. I'm going to show you a little bit of it today. But really, our goal um, with the VMware Kubernetes engine is to get you into Kubernetes and be done with it simplify the entire process. I know that seems, uh, uh, you know, some, some people are like, why would, no, do you really want to be managing Kubernetes, the infrastructure around it? Probably not. I want to deploy applications, I want to use my, you know, open source solutions, whether it's Jaeger or Helm or, you know, you name it, to, to, to be up and running and, and creating my applications as quick as possible. One of the key differentiators with our smart clusters is we do have a development cluster and obviously a production smart cluster. Um, I'm going to provision into a development uh, smart cluster today. But this just gives you a high level of the, the, the pieces that are available to you. Obviously, we've got an ingress controller, pod networking, managed OS upgrades, uh, as well as monitoring elasticity. When you move to the production cluster, obviously, we add HA support. Um, and then that's when you get into uh, integration with your public cloud that you're deployed on. Today it's Amazon, uh, you'll see that, we'll deploy into US West 2. Uh, and then uh, you know, obviously as we move into Google and uh, Azure, you'll have those same capabilities. Another piece um, that we kind of, you know, customers start to ask is well, what about security, what about multi-tenancy? Um, from its nature, from the beginning, we built in multi-tenancy on purpose. Um, so each organization who gets, uh, uh, who utilizes VKE, um, and we've got plenty that are doing it today uh, in the beta format, um, they have their own dedicated pod or dedicated space um, that you know is, is separate from uh, from another vendor, another tenant uh, that is a consumer. But here's the key: when we do this, um, does anybody like managing IAM policies on any system? No, I didn't think so. I, I know I don't. Um, we actually manage uh, the identity the, the identity access pieces for you um, within VMware Kubernetes Engine. A um, good example of that, my team, I'm an org owner, um, and I've got my boss and my peer, we're, we're all org owners. We can do whatever we want. But we've got a couple of teammates that are on our team, a little bit more, you know, a little bit junior, 
Um, and we don't want to give them access to our stuff. Um, so guess what? I have policies in place that prevent them from doing anything in my workspace. Now, I can go do stuff in theirs, but they can't in mine. I think that just kind of sets the stage uh, for how we utilize identity, uh, identity policies and so on uh, within VKE. Um, this is the obviously important part. Uh, how can I use the existing services in Amazon, you know, obviously soon to be Azure and, and, and uh, et cetera, is because we, you know, we're, we are running in Amazon. We set up VPC peering. Um, you can utilize services, whether it's storage uh, or some of the uh, MLA uh, uh, AI type of activities that's, uh, that's going on out there. Um, really about leveraging the ecosystem, once again. Um, in this case, this is uh, from, from an AWS perspective. Um, I mentioned this already. Um, the other idea that we, that we wanted to really kind of set forward is the idea of, of a little bit of separation, really just from a, from a usability perspective. So we actually have folders. Um, that we've created, um, and that is really a kind of a, a it's really just a graphical, uh, to me it's kind of a graphical place to, to, to do this, but you can actually set policies from an access level uh, as well as quota policies. Maybe this is a non-production application, you only get access to development clusters, right? And then, you know, as you, as you promote code, maybe then you can provision it as a, uh, uh, as a, as a production uh, HA instance if you wanted to. I think you'll see a little bit of that as we jump into the demo. So let's jump into the demo here. Um, I am going to start in the GUI. I'm sorry, but I'll quickly get out of the GUI and, and jump into, uh, into a command line. Um, this is the VMware Kubernetes engine. Pretty simple stuff, right? Um, we've got the ability to create a smart cluster. I'm, I'm going to walk you through the steps here. I'm actually not going to provision it because I want to do that from the, uh, from the command line. Um, but notice here I've got a development cluster, a production cluster. If I expand development, I can choose the version of Kubernetes that I want. Um, and, and obviously we do maintain this uh, on a pretty regular basis based upon security practices, all that good stuff. Uh, and, and you can upgrade from older versions to new upgrades or to newer versions if you want. Um, same thing on this side, but we've got some custom networking options if you want to, just depending on the type of environment you're trying to set up. Uh, today we're available in US West, East, as well as in Ireland. From an AWS perspective, we will add additional um, as necessary. We do have our VMworld Barcelona coming up in a few months. We've got Jenkins World and Nice in, a, in, a, in about a month or so. So we're going to be adding a few additional European uh, locations um, for that particular uh, you know, region, et cetera. Um, the other thing is, yes, we do support privilege mode. Now, remember, smart cluster, we're doing a lot of the managing, spin up, spin down for you. If you choose to go into privilege mode, Obviously, you could have some negative impact and benefits um, from a daemon sets perspective. Um, so we do at least tell you have a you know have a warning. Um, you could potentially be doing something, um, and uh, and I'll show you what that looks like uh, when we get there. The other thing I want to show you is uh, I mentioned a little bit about the hierarchy. Um, so I have a project here for my team, um, and as as you can tell here, I have a single cluster running. Um, in my particular project, um, and, and you know, from there I can look at my policies as to what it's done, who can access it. Um, any of the organization uh, administrators can see my information. That's my two peers, or my boss and my peer. Um, but I mentioned the folks that were uh, a little bit less junior, or a little more junior than us. They can't see my my information, but I can see theirs. So there's some uh, some hierarchical hierarchical information in uh, in aspects to VKE that uh, customers have been really asking for to, uh, to help them fully manage Kubernetes in a, in, a, in a simpler form or fashion. So with that in mind, I'm going to jump into uh, a command line here. Um, we do have the, the VKE CLI, uh, and, and just so you know, I have, uh, I have an, a, 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 an org ID and a refresh token. Um, I am not going to show you my org ID or my refresh token. So I have created a bash shell script um, where I'm actually going to do the connection just because I don't want to share it and kill it all within the same session. So um, let me just run that real quick. I am officially logged in from the command line into VKE. And uh, you know, because I'm going to create a cluster here, let me, let me do a quick uh, VKE folder. Set VCS CTS. So I'm going to set my folder. As I mentioned, the hierarchy, this is mine. This is my team. I have the ability to create it. Then I'll just do a VKE cluster create. And I'm going to give it a name because I'm a Jenkins World and in a session. I did this for my workshop the other day. It was Jenkins World dash workshop. My region, I'm going to pick US East. Uh, let's do West. 
Yes, absolutely. And, and you can create the folder from within the GUI. In my case, uh, you have to authenticate to a folder to where, to where you actually deploy the cluster. And you'll see that in just a second. Um, not only do I have the region, um, but I am going to choose my folder in which I want it. And then I'm going to choose my project, which happens to be my group. Now, in my example, um, I'm going to choose the version of Kubernetes that I want to deploy. So you saw it from the drop down. I'll do 110.2-59. And I'm going to go ahead and enable privilege mode. Whoa, did I not spell it right? Privileged, I knew I would. So you get this lovely warning that yes, you're about to do privilege mode. I just ignore it. Um, anybody want to read the EULA too? I'm just kidding. Unsupported region, what did I do? US West, oh, I did O2. I always do zeros in front of mine, so let me fix that. So it's pretty verbose, right? The idea here is just simplification. So there's US West 2, yes. Now I am creating a Kubernetes cluster. All within two commands, three commands. It's pretty simple, easy to use. Now, because I want you to make sure that this is not smoke and mirrors, let me go back to my projects. There's me, that's where I decided to put it. Notice what is here. I've got Jenkins World Session. And guess what? It is creating. It's pretty simple, right? Um, yes, it's all, it's all set up and ready. Now, while that's running, let me, uh, let me hop over. Let me go back just a little bit. And I'm going to show you um, just a quick example of uh, you know, actually getting into kubectl or kubectl for you. So I've got another um, instance already running uh, called the uh, JW-Workshop. Um, so with that in mind, I'm going to hop back to the command line. Let me start a new session. Um, I'm just jumping back into the same jump box. So in this case, um, I am going to do a VKE whoops, cluster merge. And I'm actually going to merge with, uh, with, uh, with kubectl. So merge. And then I'm going to name it, or I have my name already. Now my context is set to that particular cluster from a Kubernetes perspective. And just to show that it actually is real. Whoops. This is actually cloud-based core running on top of, G of EKE. So there's all the intricacies from a Kubernetes perspective. So with that in mind, I'm going to pause for a second, take any quick questions, and then I'm going to turn it over to Jeff, and we're getting into the CI/CD part. Um, I'm going to go ahead and disconnect my laptop while he's coming up, but are there any questions for me? Yes, sir. Can this be used on-premise? Not today. So a little bit of a difference between our team and kind of our vision and goal. Um, we are actually starting native public cloud today. We'll start with the cloud, and then we'll bring it back on-prem. Um, if you're a current VMware customer, which obviously a lot of you are, um, if you want to do a Kubernetes, a managed Kubernetes on premises, that's where our pivotal container service comes in. Um, it's called PKS for short, um, but it is fully managed on prem Kubernetes, um, and that's what we do on prem today. Yeah. Yes, sir. Oh, no, 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 there's a default. Yeah, absolutely. The default is always the latest version that obviously we're supporting. Um, I was doing a little bit of things just to kind of show you a little bit of the variability. Um, but yeah, absolutely. Anybody else before Jeff jumps up? Yes, sir. The pivotal service, PKS, yeah. is that only on-premise? PKS sits on-premises, but it can provision to Amazon or provision to Google and obviously provision on-prem too. Oh, great question. So here's the catch. You create the cluster, there is no worker at the beginning. Not one at all. You actually have to go create and start the process of adding. In our case, I think he's going to show Helm, um, maybe. Um, then it actually goes and spins up the workers. If we go back to the idea of the smart cluster, we want to make sure you're only using the resources that you need when you need them. So we'll actually not spin them up until they're necessary. Yeah, 
it's all done on the back end. We manage it, we own it, we maintain it. Um, nothing is actually exposed to you today. Uh, we will eventually start to expose a couple of the parameters, let you do some toggles and sensitivities, whatever it may be for, for your environment, but not today. Fair? All right, Jeff, go for it, man. All right, thanks, Sean. So Sean talked about VKE, uh, and I'm gonna talk about how you run CloudBees Core, do CI CD on VKE. So first thing about CloudBees Core, if you're not familiar with CloudBees Core, it's Enterprise Jenkins, and so this supports large-scale deployments, on-prem and cloud platforms, and so you're probably used to running Jenkins as a single master. With CloudBees Core, we provide something called Operation Center that helps you manage all these Jenkins masters. Um, provides high availability for those Jenkins masters as well, so make sure that your, your build's complete. Uh, if there's a failure with a Jenkins master, we'll spin one up right away and restore it to the previous point. And provide security and compliance as well, so we provide all the role-based access control. Um, we have security for your plugins, so you're probably putting in a lot of plugins. We have something called the CloudBees Assurance Program, so we have a curated set of plugins that we ensure that there aren't any vulnerabilities, but within our product as well, if we discover one, we'll notify you of that and give you an up upgrade path for that. And we also provide simplified management, and what that means is as you bring on teams, we have a nice team onboarding process where you create a team, you can, it'll create a Jenkins master for you, uh, you'll be able to add your team members, and they also pick the type of development you're going to do. So if you're going to do Java development, those plugins that you require will be automatically installed. And then you can create your own as well. And then obviously we pro provide enterprise support. And then with the latest CloudBees core, we're all uh, Kubernetes based. So Sean talked about VKE, but the great thing that I want to point out about VKE is, is again, it's fully managed, right? If you use some of these other Kubernetes platforms, it's up to you to bring in the Kubernetes node. You have to manage those. You have to update those. With VKE, and Sean showed you through the CLI way, but the way I use is through the UI. <laughs> I went down through here, made my selections, I had a development cluster, picked the region, and then I just simply hit create. And at that point, I download the CLI, and I can start working right away. I can just focus on my application development and not have to worry about Kubernetes at all. Let's jump back. So we're going to do the CI/CD demo using CloudBees Core and VKE. And what we're going to do is we're going to use Spring Pet Clinic as an example. So we're actually going to do a Docker build. So we're going to do a, we have a bunch of Java code. We're going to do the Maven build. We'll do a Docker build. And we're going to push the Docker hub and then deploy the staging server, all on VKE. So CloudBees Core Jenkins is on VKE. All the uh, pipeline execution, all the containers that are spun up to do this will all be on VKE. So the pipeline we have here, again, we'll have a, a Maven build, Maven install, and that'll be handled by a Maven container that's spun up automatically. Uh, Docker build and push, we'll have a separate Docker container that's spun up. And then the deploy the staging server, um, we have a special VKE CLI cube cuddle container that'll handle that. And this is all defined within a Jenkins agent pod that we define that will be in our repo, and I'll show you how that's done. And then uh, those will all be spun up. The work is done, and when, they're, when that work is done, they'll be spun down. So let's go ahead and do this. So I'm gonna jump over to my CloudBees core. Again, this is running on VKE. I've already installed this through Helm. And I'm gonna go ahead and jump over to this pipeline that I have set up. Whoops, try that again. All right, let's jump over to Teams. So I already have a team set up on CloudBees Core, called the CloudBees Core VKE team. Um, I'm going to go over to pipelines. So I have this one pipeline set up, and it's actually connected to a repo that will pull all the code down. I'm going to go ahead and manually execute that. Typically, your developer would commit code, and that would trigger it automatically. We'll click on this current run, and we can see this kicked off. So let me jump over the repo to show you what's going on here in the background. So this pipeline is defined by this Jenkins file. Go ahead and zoom in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
Okay, so here's my Jenkins file. I have my stages here, so here's that Maven stage, and I've specified here this is going to be handled by this uh, Maven container. If we go down here, the Docker build and Docker push is handled by the Docker container, and then the deploy to staging server is handled by that VKE CLI cube cuddle container. And here's all the work that's being done. Now, the way these containers get defined is that if I go back, we have something called the pod template. And this is just a Kubernetes deployment file. The kind is pod. And then here we go. Here's the Maven container. Uh, here's the VKE cube cuddle container. And then here's the Docker container. So now if we jump back to our executing pipeline, so what's happened is that pod has de been deployed on VKE. Those containers have been created. And so in this first stage here, the Maven container has been acquired, and now we're doing the Maven build. So this will just take a, just a few seconds here. All right, so that's complete. So now what's happened is the Docker container has been acquired. It's doing the Docker build. That's complete. Now it's doing the Docker push, and it's pushing it to my Docker hub repository. Let's refresh this. Okay. And this will get updated here in just a few seconds. There we go. So that new image was pushed to Docker hub. We jump back. That stage was completed. And now it's doing the deployment stage. So now it's pulling down that image from Docker Hub and deploying it onto VKE. So we'll monitor this step. In just a second here, we'll get a link. Correct. That is absolutely correct. It doesn't have to be, but it's a little, little bit of demo fun. That's yeah, cool. yeah. <laughs> and there you go. There's our Spring Pet application. So that was all done in just a, just a few minutes. So just to kind of summarize what we just did there. So as a developer, this is great because in my repo, I have my code, I have my pipeline as code, and then I have my container infrastructure that executes that pipeline as code in my repo. And then with CloudBees Core, that's all read in, that all runs on VKE and uh, executes in just a few minutes. Can you say those two things again? Like, what is that code again? So we had my actual code. Uh, they had the pipeline as code. That's the Jenkins file. And then we have the container infrastructure that's used to execute that pipeline as code. And that was the pod template. And then all executes on VKE. Correct. It's a Kubernetes deployment file. Yep. All right, and that's the end of the demo. So uh, you can visit the VMware booth and uh, CloudBees booth. Any yeah. questions? Yeah. Any questions? Correct. Yeah, you could have like a, a store if you want to use these, reuse these pod templates. That's probably yeah. the best way to do it. But just for the demo purposes, the show and yeah. the repo and everything, uh, that's what we've done. But when we install the cloud base code itself, we can add the pod template. Correct. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah, you yeah. can specify a different location if you want. Uh, 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 here's the difficult part. We can actually spin clusters up so easily and then spin up necessary applications. It's, it's hard to demo <laughs> in, in a lot of ways. So we actually add some additional steps to make to at least show you we're doing this in a real way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh no, that yeah. no, this is not a best practice by any stretch. It, that's not this session. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That that pod template is specified here in the Jenkins file. It yeah. specifies a YAML file, but you could also have a URL. Yeah. As well. Yeah, and um, just kind of help everybody out. So I do have um, a couple of tries to. Uh, VMware Kubernetes engine. If you're interested in PKS, I got a few of those as well. Um, but really, our our goal, our state with uh, with VKE today, we're in beta. I mean, I'll be very honest with you, right? We are in beta. Um, we do have paying customers, even though we're technically, I guess, we call it IA now. Um, but we have we do have paying customers um, who are leveraging this, you know, pretty heavily. Um, 
but at the same time, give it a try, try it out. You get some free credits, you know, do all that good stuff. Um, and myself, you know, my team specifically, we're really looking for customer feedback. At the end of the day, you, know, you would be the one using it, you know, day in and day out. Um, you know, obviously there's sales folks who probably care a little bit more than I do about some of these things. I really just want to know what you're using it for, how you're using it, really how you're doing, you know, using Kubernetes. So um, hopefully this kind of gives you a little bit of a taste what we're doing. Um, probably a lot different than you might see traditional VMware as. Hopefully that's a good thing. Um, and you can either visit our booth. I'm going to stay here for a little bit and then head down to the booth for a while. Um, but any questions you may have, we'd, we'd happy to answer it. All right. Have a great day. Thanks for being here, and uh, enjoy the we uh, enjoy the rest of the day. Thanks.